Hello, my friends. Welcome to my corner. Are you a fan of Franz Kafka? If so, you have come to the right place. Just about a year ago, I told you about his masterpiece, The Castle, and in that video I promised you that on another occasion I would speak about America. It has taken me a year, I admit that, but here I am ready to share some thoughts with you on this great novel by Franz Kafka. Many people pay attention to the castle, many people pay attention to the trial, the metamorphosis, the short stories of Franz Kafka. All of these texts, everything that Kafka wrote pretty much, is deservedly famous. But I feel that not many people pay attention to America. And here's the thing, it is America and a few short stories that Jorge Luis Borges decided to include in his Biblioteca Personal, that collection of the most important, the most memorable books that he had ever read. And in a biographical sketch that he wrote for a magazine in the 1930s, he described America as Kafka's most hopeful and least representative novel. Now, if you're waiting for a Borges connection in this video, I'm going to have to tell you that it just happened. Okay, that's it. That's the most important thing that Borges said about America the novel, as far as I know. In my video about the castle, I proposed, among other things, that you could read the castle as an allegory of immigration. As I read that novel, what happened to me was that I kept picturing a modern-day version of K, maybe as somebody who was trying to emigrate to the U.S., somebody who was going through the legal process that he or she hoped would lead to a work permit or to a social security number or to a green card. This is a symbolic slash allegorical way of reading the castle, but that same topic becomes quite literal in America. That's one of the reasons why I am so surprised that this novel does not receive more attention, because I believe this idea of immigration, this idea of trying to live in a different place, moving, is one of those ever-relevant topics. Now, here's my explanation to that, and this is only my opinion. I think that when it comes to Franz Kafka, the preferred mode of reading for most readers is allegory. So I think in that sense, when you look at America, you could say, with Jorge Luis Borges, that this novel is not quite representative of Kafka's work. Now, I personally read America as a rough draft to the castle. It's just one way of reading it. I think each of these novels has its own value, of course, and they approach the topic in different ways, they have different perspectives. But if you think about it, the situation that the hero finds himself in, in both of these cases, is basically the same. What we have in both of these novels, The Castle and America, is a stranger in a strange land trying to find a place for himself and encountering all sorts of obstacles along the way. The theme of persecution is also present in both of these texts. So with America, what I would say is that Kafka is giving us yet another parable of frustration. And I think in that sense, on the other hand, you could say that America is actually quite representative of the work of Franz Kafka. America has been described as Kafka's most traditional and funniest novel. It is the story of 16-year-old Karl Rossmann, who is shipped to the U.S. by his parents after he gets a servant girl pregnant. And in this novel, as in the picaresque novel, basically what you encounter is a series of hilarious, grotesque, and unfortunate events. The character develops as he encounters all sorts of secondary characters. You have, for example, the stoker, Uncle Jakob, Clara, the hotel manageress who gives Carl a job as a bellhop. Then, of course, you have characters like Robinson, like Delamarche, like Brunelda. And when I look at all of these secondary characters that help us to form an idea of the protagonist, I believe the Stoker is probably the most important one. As you probably know, uh, the first chapter of America is also has also been published as a separate short story titled The Stoker. And you can still find some collections of Kafka's work that include this story, because America the novel was initially going to be this short story titled The Stoker, and it reads very, very well independently. But after The Stoker, the characters that caught my attention the most were Robinson, Delamarche, and Brunelda. 
Robinson and Delamarch, they're very interesting and they reminded me of case assistants in the castle. And about Brunelda, what I'm going to say is that there's an element in her and also in Clara of Kay's love interest or main love interest, Frida, from the castle. Now, Jorge, why are you pointing out these connections? Well, I just want to propose once again that one possibility of reading America is as a type of rough draft to the castle. And I think you can see it also in the connections between the secondary characters that we encounter in both of these novels. Let's talk a little bit about the setting now, okay? The question here is why the US? I think that Kafka excelled at portraying that search for the unattainable, right? I think that is something that we can say about Franz Kafka. His heroes are just like Sisyphus figures. And you will remember that in Albert Camus' collection of essays, The Myth of Sisyphus, there is an entire chapter that is devoted to the work of Franz Kafka though uh, within parentheses here he does not really mention America right? like many other critics so I think that's interesting uh, in itself but going back to what I was saying in other words the land of opportunity is I believe the perfect place for a Kafka hero to fail okay the setting just makes the frustrations of the hero more ironic and even heartbreaking so for Carl to fail in the US is basically a double failure in this land of opportunity but at the same time Kafka's US is not the real US is it I mean Kafka never visited the US in his novel the Statue of Liberty is holding a sword okay now many people say or think that this is a mistake it's not really a mistake. I think that as many, as maybe even most, and as maybe even all of Kafka's works, America takes place not in the quote-unquote real world, but in a kind of alternate reality. And that's one of the reasons why you have this different uh, Statue of Liberty. What has happened here, in a way, is that Lady Liberty has become Lady Justice. That's why she is holding that sword. And we have to keep in mind that Carl is a sinner. That is one of the first things that we are told about him. So, America is unfinished. Okay, This is a novel that does not really have an ending. But then, uh, so are most of Kafka's works. you know. And as has been said before by many critics, even those works of Franz Kafka that actually are complete and have a kind of conclusion, there is a sort of inconclusiveness to them also. That is one of the reasons why, as Albert Camus said, we are kind of forced to reread Kafka, right, every time that we experience one of his works. Now, if you're interested in how America would have ended, in this edition of the book there is a really nice uh, afterword that will tell you how the story would have ended. And by the way, if you compare the um, unavailable or the unwritten endings of America and the castle, they are very similar. And I feel that a comparison of those two unwritten endings also supports my view of America as a type of rough draft to the castle. Now, in a way, okay, I really like works that do not have an ending because we have that inconclusiveness to them that can be frustrating but at the same time it can also be quite rich because when you don't have an ending it sort of forces you to focus on something other than plot I think most of the time for obvious reasons or maybe because of our training as uh, readers of stories or as listeners of tales we tend to focus too much on the plot and plot is only one of the elements of a uh, written text or of a text of fiction Still, considering all of this, okay, what I want to share with you now is the advice that I would give to Kafka. And I'm going to be awfully presumptuous right here. But if I had met Kafka back in the day, I would have told him, you know, Franz, mein Freund, uh, instead of writing novels or instead of trying to write novels, focus on novellas, okay? Novellas are not plot driven. They uh, cultivate suggestion. The ending of the novella, most of the time, is an open ending. And Kafka showed us, really, repeatedly, that he was excellent at writing novellas. I think that The Metamorphosis is one of the most perfect examples of the novella. And if somebody asks me, Jorge, 
what is the novella? Can you explain the genre to me? The first thing that I would do is I would give them a copy of the Metamorphosis and I would be like, read this first and then we can talk about the genre and we can go into all of the details and all of the features of it. So I do believe that the Metamorphosis is one of the most excellent examples of the novella. But with all of this, of course, I'm being absolutely tongue-in-cheek, okay? I think that part of the charm of Kafka was precisely the fact that he is a, a bit of a messy writer. If he had written perfect novellas, I think it's, he would still have been an amazing author, but it would not have been the Kafka that we know, and part of that charm, I believe, would have been lost. So I'm totally joking when I say that I would have given this advice to him. Let's compare then America with uh, his other novels, okay? I think there's much to be gained by doing this. So America may not be as complex as the castle, but I would say that this is in fact the best place to start with Kafka. The castle, on the other hand, is Kafka's best novel, but precisely because of that, right, I would say that you should leave the castle for the last. That's what I did. I read uh, Kafka's novels in this order. I read The Trial, America, and finally The Castle. But America, I think, is the novel for readers who are looking for a more traditional, for a more straightforward type of narrative. So that's why I'm saying that I would probably tell readers who are completely unfamiliar with the work of Franz Kafka, if they want to approach the novels, I would go first with America. Now, the question. Is this really Kafka's funniest novel? I think the short answer is yes, okay? But that said, we also have to consider that Kafka is said to have laughed out loud whenever he was reading his work to his friends. So for all that we know, he may have meant the trial and the castle to be just as funny as America. The problem, of course, is that certain events of the 20th century in particular have made it virtually impossible, I would say, for us to read The Trial or The Castle even in a comedic type of light. But what I would like to emphasize here is something that Kafka pointed out in his diaries. He said when he was writing America that what he was trying to do was to write a Dickens novel. And of course he could have meant many things by that, but I think that one of the things that he was pointing out was that he was trying to write a uh, type of comedy. And that is one of the many things that we know Dickens for. So let me tell you now a little bit about my edition. I have the one that was published by Schocken, and this one comes with a new foreword by E. L. Doctorow, who describes America, and I think this is wonderful, as a claustrophobic road novel. I'm just going to let that speak for itself. I think that is a great uh, description of this novel. It also has a preface by Klaus Mann that I think is a really, really good companion piece to the preface or the homage that his father, Thomas Mann, wrote that is included in the version of The Castle that is published also by Schocken. I have all of my Kafka uh, works in this edition. I have my copy of The Trial right here that I also wanted to show you. And another thing that you're going to find in this copy of America are really nice illustrations that accompany the text, like the one that you may be able to see right here. These illustrations were by, let me give you the name, Emlyn Etting. So you have uh, quite a few of them throughout the text, and I feel that they really add something to the reading experience. It's really nice to have those visuals every now and then. So, uh, bottom line. I know that The Trial and The Castle are monumental works of literature, but please do not forget about America. This really is Kafka at his most hilarious, and it really does include all of the features, I believe, that make Kafka a great author. Now, personally, if I had put together my own Biblioteca Personal, as Borges did, I may not have chosen America. You know, I may have gone with The Trial, or maybe The Castle, or The Metamorphosis, or just simply a collection of short stories. But the very fact that Borges chose this to include in his personal biblioteca, right, his personal library, just gives it a special aura for me. And I think that also has a lot to do with my enjoyment of the text, because, as you know, text is important, but there's also context involved. And all of these things, context, subtext, metatext, all of those are just part of the text. So I think it's important to remember those things when we assess our reading experience. 
Do you have any questions, comments, recommendations, recipes? I'm always listening and I really love to hear your thoughts on America or on any other works that you read by Kafka or similar works, works that you can make connections with. Those are my two cents on America by Franz Kafka. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.